before I get into um, the episode I had planned, <clears throat> um, I just want to take a minute. Um, as you know, we've had too much death this week. We're starting with the 58 souls lost in the shootings in Las Vegas. And of course we have some celebrity passings, um, one affecting professional wrestling. Lance Russell passed away yesterday, a couple days ago. Uh, Tom Petty passed away on Monday. And um, just found out a little bit ago, um, comedian Ralphie May passed away earlier today. Um, the celebrity death is tragic because it, it's, it's a different kind of tragedy because it's, these are people who've touched us um, through their gifts and their art. And of course, you know, we feel for their families. The shootings in Las Vegas is a different tragedy because it's simply needless, senseless violence. Whether terrorism, whether revenge, or simply someone waking up one day and deciding that they are going to take as much life as possible. We have to acknowledge the fact that these people are not a stance. These people are not a fuel for whatever political stance the rest of us have. These were human beings. These were somebody's mothers and fathers, someone's brothers and sisters, someone's sons and daughters. These people made an impact in the lives around them and to use them to further our own causes is simply is wrong. I know some believe it doesn't do much. Some don't feel it's necessary. And if you don't feel like you need to do it with me, that is, that is your prerogative. But I'm going to pray for the souls that were lost and those left behind. Because we can we can move forward, but we never truly move. Lord, grant them eternal rest, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls, and all the souls of the faithful departed, rest in peace. Amen. Are you ready for war? Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode of The Guido Goes Off, as always. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, thank you, of course, for watching. Um, hope you're getting ready for a great weekend. As you know, we got my No Mercy coming up this weekend. Um, I've got a lot to cover, so it's probably going to be pretty um, short, sweet, to the point. So let's get started. Well, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the biggest announcement coming out of WWE, and at least NXT this week, um, was the announcement that the um, 
NXT TakeOver, um, which will be the night before WWE Survivor Series, the theme is War Games. And the War Games match has been brought back. Um, for those of you who are not aware of the concept of War Games, um, the way it was, um, it, this was actually a construct um, that Dusty Rhodes came up with after watching Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And uh, forgive me, I'm going to do my really bad Dusty Rhodes impression. So he probably went to NWA management and said, now what we're going to do? We're going to put a couple of rings. We're going to put a couple of rings in the middle of the arena. Then we're going to put a cage. A cage to cover both of those rings. And then we're going to get two teams. Two teams that are going to come in one at a time. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be going to be epic. It's going to be Wonderful. Okay, sorry, sorry, but I'm, I'm basically I'm thinking that's how he promoted it. But it's a great match, a great match concept. Um, we haven't seen it um, since since two um, yeah since uh, the year two thousand. Um, the last time it, it actually appeared on a uh, Monday Nitro. Um, of course, WCW took over the concept, and um, we know that Triple H has wanted to do this for quite some time. And, you know, but Vince has been all home and then hot on the main roster. So now they're going to do it in NXT where he's like, okay, I can do whatever I want. I run NXT. Um, for those of you who don't know, it hasn't really been announced as of yet. So possible spo so spoilers, sorry. Um, now, normally, War Games was two teams of four. In this case, it's going to be three teams of three. Um, it will be Sanity. Versus, um, of course, the team of Eric Young, Alexander Wolf, and Killian Dane, uh, versus the Undisputed Era, the team of Adam Cole, Bebe, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish, uh, versus the team of the Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong. Um, now I don't know really how they're going to do it yet. Whether or not they're just going to have like the the cell on top of one ring, or if they're actually going to do uh, the double cage over two. It's um, it's really not you know. Unfortunately, that much isn't really known as of yet. Um, but for those of you unfamiliar with it, I'm sure you can see there's um, a War Games um, collection on the WWE Network. Um, the way it usually works is um, it used to be two teams of four, but now you got three teams of three. I guess one member of each team is going to start, and then at random intervals, uh, another member of a team is going to come in. Um, this is going to happen at, at various intervals. I think it was like five minutes when, when WCW did it. Um, once everybody's in, uh, the only way to win is by submission or surrender. Getting someone to submit, I get a, you know, tap out, say I give up. Or one of the members of a team says, we surrender. So, um, I'm looking forward to this because it's going to be interesting to see, what, one, how they do it what, and, and how... Uh, it goes about because it was a very exciting match um, back in the day and was used to settle a lot of feuds. I mean, it used to be just, hey, we'll just throw a couple teams together, see what happens. But now it, you know, but then it became, I know it was used a lot during the, uh, you know, the later days, well, with the NWO of WCW. And it's a very exciting match concept, at least in my opinion. Your opinion may differ. And so I'm looking forward to it. Okay, moving on to a couple of no my, my notes from Raw as to uh, why are we doing these things. Um, of course, it was Tease um, in the last part of Raw uh, where, um, where Roman Reigns is sitting in the locker room. Then all of a sudden, Dean Ambrose shows up and then Seth Rollins shows up and then the two of them walk off. Uh, as we know, earlier in the night, The Miz uh, had, a, had defended the Intercontinental title against Roman Reigns, and Sheamus and Cesaro interfered, and then the three of them were doing the you know, fists out um, shield thing. So, WWE is te either teasing a shield reunion, or they're going to do it outright. It's funny they're doing it now, when, you know, ratings are down and we're trying to make Roman Reigns a thing still, you know, it's it's been years where, you know, 
trying to do this very what various ways. Instead of making it more organic, we're gonna force it on everyone. Um I mean a one time thing is great, but let's not make a steady diet of this like everything else that has been done. Um the next one. Um at tables, ladders, and chairs, I guess, uh, Bray Wyatt, um, not the darn Rob, Bray Wyatt, um, was sitting in a rocking chair, constantly going, she never lied to me, she never lied to me, she never lied to me. He then, uh, cut a promo against Finn Balor, stating that, in truth, you don't, in truth, Finn doesn't put on the demon persona. It's that he takes off the Finn Balor persona to become the demon, um, Kind of like if you guys have ever seen Kill Bill Volume Two, how um, when Bill talks about Superman, you know, he says Spy you know, Clark Peter Parker puts on a costume to become Spider Man, Bruce Wayne puts on a costume to become Batman. Um, but yet Superman, he was born Superman, he's always been Superman, and he has to put on a Clark Kent costume to be normal like the rest of us. That's essentially what he's insinuating. And then he says that he said that he was going to introduce Finn to Sister Abigail, and then all of a sudden you see him uh, with like a shroud over his face with a female's laughter, uh, basically going all Norman Bates a la Psycho. Now, people have been wondering, is there going to be a physical Sister Abigail? Um, there has been uh, talk about this ever since Bray Wyatt um, talked about Sister Abigail. Um, prior to the group, the Wyatt family, coming to NXT, it was rumored, um, they had talked about bringing Paige on as their sister Abigail. Um, Sage Northcutt, um, um, competitor in the May Young Classic and part of WWE's developmental roster, uh, she was even hinting at the possibility she could be sister Abigail. But from what we gather, it's basically going to be Bray Wyatt in drag. Okay, um, seriously, creative, just, just pony up the dough, bring up one of the ladies, hire Daphne, I, honestly, I think Daphne would be a perfect sister of Abigail, she, you know, she doesn't have to wrestle, just, just cut amazing promos, she's really good at that, but basically, putting Bray Wyatt in drag, Again, it, it's just another. It's another one. These people have no clue what they're doing with Bray Wyatt. Never have, and probably never will. And two, I mean, seriously, you've got a crap ton of women that you could put as Sister Abigail. So do that. And above all, also try to make Bray Wyatt interesting for God's sakes. Honestly, this this should have died. This this storyline should have died. At, after, um, No Mercy. I mean, seriously, you know, Finn Balor beat him as the demon. He beat him as Finn Balor. I mean, what else are you going to do? To be honest, it's just... <clears throat> Speaking of the Performance Center, it is made official Shayna Baszler. This week, she reported to the uh, Performance Center to begin her WWE training. As, we, as many of you know, Shane Baszler was the runner-up in the May Young Classic, uh, losing in the finals in a very, very good match uh, to Kari Singh. And um, the match was very impressive. I mean, I, I was even impressed. Um, now, she has been um, a pro wrestler for three years, and, and her skills you know, were quite good. I mean, good Lord, the woman put can put a uh, rear naked choke out of nowhere, like, like the RKO. I'll say that's 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 good. That's amazing. Um, so, Baszler has begun her training, and of course, um, the talk of whether or not the four horsewomen are going to be coming, and uh, what they're going to do about that. Um, as I said before, the w, um, Triple H and WWE talk about still being interested in signing Ronda Rousey, although she has not yet signed. So, uh, going forward, um, who knows about that part, but, um, 
Shane is there. Shane is training. So hopefully we'll see Shana on TV again fairly soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, after a year of speculation and fear and humming and hawing, it has been confirmed. There will be a season four of Lucha Underground. Um... As we know right now, they're wrapping up Season 3. They uh, just had Part 2 of Ultima Lucha Trace this um, this Wednesday. Uh, for the record, if you haven't seen these matches, I highly suggest you do. Because Lucha Underground is a, a great wrestling show. It, it's just great, a, a great show. That's all you need is, is, is a great show. It, and... Um, but there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not season four would happen. Um, talent had been um, trying to get a hold of people to see whether or not this was going to happen. Um, there was uh, even talent showing up at how at indie shows um, deliberately violating their contracts just so that they could hear from somebody in management. Um, but. Um, but apparently that's all been put to rest as of now. Um, there is one big, um, there's one big thing. However, apparently the budget has been cut. Um, I don't know by how much and how how much this will affect um, the quality of the show. And it's, I mean, a lot of this is hard to tell. I mean, literally everything we've been seeing. It's been in the can for a year. They have not filmed a single bit of Lucha Underground in over a year. And hopefully, um, you know, we're gonna you know gonna get back to this. Um, I know there's some talent that has moved on. Um Johnny Mundo and Taya. Um, I think Ray Mysterio has moved on as well. Um so it's going to be interesting what they do with the face. You know, and of course, uh, the situation with Sexy Star. It's going to be interesting to see what um, goes on as far as Season 4 of Lucha Underground is concerned. Um, again, more on this as it develops because you people deserve it. And, you know, I like Lucha Underground. I think you'd like Lucha Underground if you have not seen it yet. I know, I know in some places it's hard to see. But... So, here's to season four of Lucha Underground. Okay, on to the indie scene. Um, a big development. Um, Canuck Pro Wrestling, which was scheduled to have uh, shows on the on the 28th and 29th of this year, or on the 20th and 29th of this month, has barely folded. Um, it was only put together a few months ago. Um, it was getting a lot of talent, a lot of the top indie talent from all over. And they're putting get you know, looking to put together this this huge, huge show, um, set of shows on the 20th and 29th. Well, apparently they couldn't pay for him, and the promoters disappeared. He's gone AWOL. No one knows where he is, and this has left a lot of uh, indie talent scrambling uh, to find a uh, place to work that weekend. Um, friends of the show, Russell Circus, have. Uh, Reached out to some of these talents if anyone, if anybody of them wants to uh, uh, get a booking, and um, some other um, indie promotions have also um, jumped in, offering uh, bookings to anyone who was booked for this, and well, now have nothing to do because that's this money out of their pockets. That's you know, you know, to 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 book somebody, you know, is is to promise, hey. We're gonna pay you. We're going to, you know, we're going to, you know, you come to the show. We're going to pay you, and then just yoink, take the rug out from under everything. That's stupid, man. It's just stupid. And I hope all these wrestlers that were booked for the show that they do find something else. Like I said, Wrestle Circus. Um, I know some other, a couple other promotions, uh, putting together something. Uh, so. Yeah, assholes. Another big announcement um, on the indie circuit um, does affect uh, WWE. Um, very interesting. For the first time in eight years, 
Candice Michelle will be wrestling. She is coming out of retirement. Um, I think she said it was it's one more match. Um, and it's for um, the Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. She's uh, coming out of retirement. To, uh, I guess it's just one more match. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Candice essentially retired from professional wrestling in 2009. Um, after her contract had not been was not going to be renewed by WWE, um, she did do some more modeling. Um, she did. Uh, I don't know if she got married, but I know she um, had a baby. And now um, she's just like, you know what? We're gonna wave the magic wand one more time and see if there's anything left in it. Well, that got dirty real quick. I I, I need to hire censors to to go through my material um, since I. Oh, I just wrote notes. But anyway, it's great to hear this. Um, always fun to see um, a talent come back for one last go around. Um, for the you know, kind of like a kind of like a Glacier uh, in the Honor Rumble. Uh -huh. yeah. Glacier. Yeah. Okay. Let me get, let me live my dream. But if you're in the area, go see it. And finally, something brought to my attention today that, oh, some people are idiots. Um, and unfortunately, these people work for legitimate news outlets. Um, Noah England of the Sportster uh, put together a list of 15 women. Um, the headline would be, is 15 female wrestlers who wouldn't be considered attractive if they were a never famous. Let's see here. Need to add this. Basically, um, come, okay, basically, you know, I'm not, I don't even. Yeah, um, I'm trying to figure out, uh, this, this, basically this guy, um, basically this guy put together a list of 15 women that basically he didn't find attractive that are in wrestling, and he thinks that they wouldn't be considered attractive if they were not in wrestling. Um, now this, now, it's interesting because his, um, list mentions uh, the wrestlers who had been the, the female the lady wrestlers who had been Playboy playmates, and now while this list um, includes the like uh, some of the likes of Jacqueline uh, Naomi's on this list, uh, AJ Lee on the list, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, um, and ODB, and, you know a, a lot of women that you know. That are considered attractive by people. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying you know, you know, every one of them, but you know, my it's my taste, and you know, taste is subjective. Beauty is irrelevant. But this guy's using um, Playboy cover girls essentially as his standard of beauty, and I find it interesting that he uses that um, medium. It was actually pointed out to me. Uh, by my good friend at uh, Cre Crem Sebastian, that even while he uses uh, the, re the the lady wrestlers who were in Playboy as his standard, China, whose two spreads in Playboy magazine were the two highest selling issues in Playboy's history, is on this list. So we're gonna get down to you know what this this basically is. Um, this is basically um, worthless opinion-filled BS clickbait under the guise of something that um, is relevant, and this guy thinks is relevant. Interestingly enough, this guy does not show his face anywhere, not even on not on his Twitter, not on his, nowhere. So let's take that into effect, or into account. Sorry. sorry, sorry, I get a little hot about this because, as we all know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
you know, there are, you know, there are uh, aspects of beauty that are intangible that you can't measure on a hot or not list or on a bathroom scale or by cup size or any of, of these things. And these women are, are beautiful in their own way by these intangibles, by these, um, you know, by these, by these immeasurable stamp, by these in, in, immeasurable um, statistics, you know. And while you might have a woman who fits the uh, whatever, you know, the, the, I guess what the what the late great Hugh Hefner uh, put out as the model of beauty. But some of those women on the inside, when you talk to them, they are uglier than sin. What I'm basically saying is, one, just because you don't have a shot with a woman, don't insult them. Two, the business of wrestling has changed. Beauty is taking a back, you know, physical beauty has taken a back seat to wrestling ability. And I'm not, and let me tell you something, there's a lot of women out there in the indies, in TNA, or in Impact, in Lucha Underground, in WWE, in NXT, in Ring of Honor, that have both. So basically to Noah England, who, you know, if that is your real name, Keep it to yourself. Just keep it to yourself. And for the record, he, he, he talked about how beautiful Kelly Kelly is. <laughs> don't don't, don't me scared on Kelly Kelly. I, I, we've been there. We've been there with Kelly Kelly. And she can just, just, just go away. And you too, sir. You can just, just go away. I've given you more attention than you deserve. Way more attention than you deserve. Well, that is going to do it for um, a very interesting edition of The Guido Goes Off. As always, folks, I thank you for watching. And I would love to hear your opinions on the topics I covered in this episode. As always, feel free to drop a line in the comment section below. And as always, you can talk to me via my social media posted right here. And of course like this video share it with everyone everyone come on and of course if you have not please hit that subscribe button just got two new subscribers this week thank you guys or girls some some of you have privacy settings that I can't know thank you very much for joining with joining us and we look forward to entertaining you here and by we I mean me it might be a cat or two. I'm not crazy. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, actually, next time will be pretty soon. As as you as you might know, I had a fan poll come up, and uh, we're gonna do the show based off that one. So until that time, I am the Guido, and for you know at least a little while, I think we're done here.